Now I must admit that whenever I see the size of Africa and how far I'm going to have to paddle, it is extremely daunting. It's a daunting prospect, um, the challenge that I've set myself with many, many, many problems. Um, okay, so I've got to paddle rapids and navigate my way down through unknown territories and rivers. I've got to avoid getting eaten by crocodiles and you know, territorial hippos. Malaria from mosquitoes and all sorts of other diseases. There's snakes, scorpions, spiders. And then on top of all that, I've got to, to feed myself. I need food. Um, which is very important without that, you know, I'm not going to be able to achieve the goal. And then, you know, there's water. Okay, I'm going to be paddle boarding down a, a river, but, um, you know, you can't just <laughs> drink, drink the water straight from the river. I'm going to have to somehow filter it and get it clean and, and, and good enough to, to actually drink. Um, Carrying on my kit, everything I need with me. Um, I mean, it is, yeah, is is this expedition? Is there a reason why nobody's ever done this? You know. Okay, Leveson Wood. He kind of walked the length of the Nile. Um, the difference here being that I'm going to be actually on the Nile. I mean, I, I have no idea what it's actually going to be like, I'll be honest. Temperatures, uh, weather, terrain, the landscape in general. I'm just plotting the route here on, on, on Google Earth as best as I can. I mean, that alone, and I know this from experience, from, from trekking Britain's coastline, it's going to take at least a month just to to do a rough plot of, of, of the route that I'm, I'm going to take. Um, I've yet to also get on a paddleboard and actually paddle. I, yeah, I've never never paddleboarded before. So um, there's a, a huge learning curve for me there. I need, to, I need to be able to paddleboard like a pro by the time I get to Rwanda and, and, and set off on the challenge. And I've only given myself a year to get myself ready. Uh, that's physically fit, mentally fit. I, mean, I can't believe how busy I am in between writing the book for for the trek, which hopefully will sell and give me some sort of income to to fund this this challenge. I mean, also, I'm, I mean, okay, yeah, okay, I've got Fat Stick, the. Um, stand-up paddleboard manufacturers to sponsor me and give me a board which I'm hoping we'll, we'll be able to innovate some new expedition technologies uh, uh, and, and custom build a special paddleboard specifically for this challenge but I need to get more sponsors I, I, I'm gonna need clothing um, maybe even get an airline to fly me out there and, and obviously back again when I reach Egypt maybe find accommodation along the way. There's plenty of activity centres um, that run down the Nile and, and obviously when I get closer to population there'll be hotels and hostels and things that I can stay in. Um, which will you know, make life a little bit easier. Give me a few home comforts. But there's going to be a lot of times when I'm going to be out in the middle of nowhere. Um, the Seward in South Sudan is a marsh the size of France during the wet season um, and the reeds move so that the, the path through the marsh is, is never set in stone. Um, there are floating villages 
um, which I hopefully will be able to, to come across. Um, I mean, obviously, sleeping is going to be difficult in that section. There'll be water everywhere, no dry land, and all I'll have is a, a paddleboard. What am I thinking? <laughs>